Hi, I'm Sam, the Far Middle Age Man, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I upgraded my nuclear hoverbike from the previous video into this absolute monster. If you haven't seen the previous video yet and you want to learn how we built this thing from the ground up, be sure to click on the card on screen now. Also, if you like this kind of content and want to see more like it in the future, I implore you to smash the like button, subscribe and be sure to tickle that little bell just to stay up to date whenever I post a new video. Without further ado, let's get to it. Alrighty then. As outlined at the beginning of the video, I'm going to show you how I turn this into this. This new updated version of the nuclear hoverbike comes with forward thrusters for more speed. Got a couple of forward mounted Gatlin guns. Very sexy new paint job. It's got a nice chrome trim and best of all, it's got its very own astromech droid right up front. Say hello, Alt F4. Well, I personally think that was uncalled for. Anyway, back to the build. Not only does the ship boast some impressive new features and look a lot nicer, actually a lot cheaper, weighing in at only 947 PCU, which is about 158 PCU cheaper than its slower, clunkier cousin. Sorry, buddy. Looks like he's back to the grind pit for you. Don't worry. I never grind anything down. I'm kind of a hoarder. So if you're still here, I'm assuming that you like the sound of all that, and you probably sat there screaming at me to get on with it already. So don't even think about clicking that timeline scrubber. We are starting right now. Alrighty, just like last time, I'm going to start by setting up my workstation. So firstly, we need to clear out the platform so we can land this thing on a flat surface. Next, I dropped the hover back here and I started ripping out all the things that we don't need. Firstly, we take off the barred windows so we can get into the interior a little bit more easily. Yeah, we also pulled out the ore detector as we're going to need to get underneath the control seat and this is going to be in the way. Next, we need to carefully remove the hood mounted LCD interface and the front thruster as we're going to need these again later. Okay, so now we've got all that out of the way, we can access the underside components. So I've already ripped out the emergency battery as well as the antenna and the remote control blocks and the associated armor plating. The new build doesn't have any scope for the remote control block, so we won't be needing our antenna or our camera, they can just be recycled parts. Okay, next up we're going to be tearing out those engines. These reactors will be needed again later, as well as some of the cargo storage, so I'll just keep them to one side for now. We're also going to need to get rid of some of those magnetic plates, they're far too PCU heavy, and we'll also cover up one of the ports we'll need to access later, so they're out of here. Okay, back over to the rear of the ship. The plan here is to add in some more forward thrust to the vehicle, which will make it much easier to control and also a lot easier to make a fast getaway should the need arise. Unfortunately, these gyroscopes and their mass brackets are in the way, so I've pulled them out. We're going to need at least one gyroscope later, so we'll tuck that away and see what we have room for later on. I'm going to need a way to work on the underside of the ship next, so I'm going to need a place to attach and connect in support blocks. The back of the thruster seems like an ideal place, but I'll need to make some room. So to do that, I'm going to take off the layered armor in and also the LCD. They're going to go back on later, so no need to throw them in the recycling bin just yet. Okay, now that we have all that prepared, I've built a little bit of an extension on my workspace just to allow me to turn it upside down. Obviously, this isn't normally how you would build a ship like this, so don't try this at home, kids. Not how gravity works, it's also not how welding works for that matter. Okay, now that she's upside down, way, we're going to have to focus on making some more room for the new power system. For this, I decided to chop off the armoring just beneath the control seat, as we're a little tight for space everywhere else. Just be careful when you're grinding parts off your ship though. Sometimes the front can fall. Well, now we're finally ready to start adding things back into the ship. So we're going to start off with this new piece, which is just a small conveyor port just so that we can attach some reactors to it. We're going to need three reactors for this build. We already had two from the initial design, so I'll bring those back in at this stage. Just for reference, anything I've colored in red is a new item added to the ship, whereas blue is something that we are repurposing from the original build. From this point forward, I'll paint everything back to the heavy rust color between sections of the build, just to keep it clear as to what I've changed. I hope this helps. 
Okay, back to the build. We are also going to add in our emergency battery and our forward magnetic plate. And we're also going to add in one of the cargo containers from earlier. Who says recycling has to be boring? Okay, next we're going to reattach the front here in the dark blue. And then we're going to add some of the armoring that we removed earlier to protect those reactors. We're sitting on some pretty nasty stuff here. Hopefully that doesn't irradiate my sperm count or something. We should be fine, right? Okay, now it's time to flip her back over Way. and start putting things back together. So we'll start with the new stuff. We've added two forward thrusters at the rear. These should provide a good amount of momentum. And we're also going to add in some Gatling guns to the front on either side of the control seat. Just between the Gatling guns, we're going to add in a second of our recycled cargo containers, which will act as our ammo storage. On top of our ammo storage would be a good place for a gyroscope, I think. So let's just dust that off and weld it in place. And let's also add in our remaining thruster back in, in its rightful place. Uh, instead of adding the camera back to the front though, let's use one of those offset spotlights we discarded earlier. Okay, we also came back here to the rear of the ship and replaced the layered armor in and the LCD up in the center. Good as new. Okay, next up we needed to replace the uh, heads up display at the front. Uh, reattach all of our barred windows for that extra fortified look. I've also added a couple of new full barred windows just at the side of the Gatlin turrets. This lets us access the cargo containers, which will let us replenish our ammo reserves, which is always handy. Believe it or not, all that's really left to do is give her the sexy new paint job. So I went for a plain black here with the battered armor texture for that gritty feeling. So then I painted some of the key areas in like a white retro future texture just to give it that chrome effect finish. And there we have it. Job done. Okay, before we move on, I just want to say a huge thank you to watching this far through the video. Hopefully I've helped you watching this in some way, whether it's entertainment, learning something new, or even just killing time on the train on the way to work. To help me continue to make more content just like this, I invite you to hit the like button and subscribe. And if you have time, please leave a comment. Every interaction you have with this video helps it spread to more new potential viewers, which massively helps the channel grow. And I really appreciate it. If you want to go one step further, maybe reach out and uh, subscribe to me over on Twitch or follow me on Twitch. I think it's, it's, you can subscribe if you want, but you know, a follow will do. Also got a growing Discord community that you are more than welcome to join, the more the merrier. It does come with its own Space Engineers server, which is for community members, so feel free to join. Links down in the description below. I'll also put a link down there to my new Patreon page for anyone who wants to support me on there as well. At the time of recording this, you can support me on Patreon for as little as one pound, which is about one pound, uh, one pound? One pound is about one pound. Uh, it's about one dollar fifty. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Let's get back to the video. Well, there we have it, folks. Version 2, the advanced nuclear hoverback. What a time to be alive, right? Personally, I think this one looks about ten times better than the previous iteration, but both have different use cases. The original one was more designed to help get around the desert and spot ore deposits further out than I could realistically go on foot. This version doesn't even have an ore detector, but you can still use it for that if you wish. You just have to either find a spot to add the ore detector or get out with your mining drill just to take a closer look. I would like to try and make a hydrogen version of this in the future. Let me know what you think of that in the comments. Or if you have any other thoughts or suggestions for me instead, that would also be helpful. Ah, what did you think of all that altar for? Yes, it was pretty impressive, wasn't it? If you haven't yet seen the prequel to this video, be sure to check it out using the link on screen now. Otherwise, have an excellent day, keep on being awesome, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!